Welcome back. We just heard from the Harris campaign headquarters. Let's now turn to the Trump campaign. Joining me now is Trump campaign press secretary Caroline Levitt. Caroline, thanks so much for being here on Election Day. I know it's a busy time for all of you. <laughs> thanks for having us, Kristen. We appreciate it. Well, we really appreciate your being here. Let's dive right in. So all of the campaign stops are now over. Give me the mood inside the Trump campaign, the mood for former President Trump as you all await results. The mood is very optimistic here at the Trump campaign headquarters. We are uh, cautiously confident that President Trump is going to win this election tonight. When we've been looking at the early voting data over the past couple of weeks during this early voting period, Republicans have been outpacing Democrats in many of the key battleground states. And what we're hearing across the country today is that turnout is exceptionally high, especially in rural areas. So all signs point to President Trump supporters showing up at the polls, and we're just just continuing to encourage people throughout the day to get out and to vote and to stay in line if you are in line. We understand some of the lines in these key battleground counties and states can be particularly long today, but we're encouraging everyone to stay in line to cast their ballot for President Trump. Well, let me ask you something about uh, what Charlie Kirk said. He, of course, is a Trump supporter. Part of the ground game is being conducted by Charlie Kirk, Turning Points USA. Here's what he tweeted earlier today. He said, turnout is mixed and not where we want it to be. We need more people to vote. We can't let turnout flatline. What do you make of that, Caroline? Does that concern mm -hmm. you? Does it concern the former president? No, as I said earlier, we are hearing that turnout is high, particularly in rural America. Turnout is low in urban America. But again, as Charlie, I think, was trying to say with that tweet, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but look, we are not taking anything for granted. And that's why we have been doing GOT efforts here at the Trump campaign headquarters, continuing to call voters and encourage them to get out the polls. We believe in our ground game. We have spent months uh, training hundreds of thousands of volunteers across the country who who are responsible for turning out low propensity voters in their respective communities. So we trust our ground game. We trust our people on the ground and we're continuing to work to get voters out to the polls. So uh, again, we are cautiously confident that as, as long as President Trump supporters continue to show up as we have seen them do throughout the morning and the early afternoon today, then we're going to win tonight. Well, you're right. It's all going to come down to those low propensity voters. I know there has been so much focus on making sure they do turn out to vote. I have been talking to some allies of the former president who are somewhat concerned that the ground game was outsourced to some extent. Do they have reason to be concerned? We're getting a lot of stats coming in from the Biden campaign. For example, they say they're knocking on two million doors per minute in Pennsylvania. How confident are you in the ground game? We are 100 percent confident in our ground game. We have truly put together the most robust, data-driven and people-powered ground game that we believe in American politics. That will be proven again when President Trump uh, hopefully declares victory. But we, th there was a lot of criticism and concern because we changed some things from past mm -hmm. years. And in politics, when you change up the game, then sometimes there's criticism from the outside. But in this building, we believe in the ground game that we have put together. We have accepted exceptional data experts who are looking at the numbers coming in. And again, all of the early voting trends and also the voter registration trends that we have seen over the past several weeks in Pennsylvania, for instance, where we were out registering, Republicans were out registering Democrats by a margin of two to one. In Arizona, Georgia, North Carolina, where Republicans were outpacing Democrats, not just with voter registration, but also early voter turnout. I think that's a testament to our ground game. We just have to finish the job today. And we, I should correct myself. It's three million total. They were touting 2,000 per minute over the weekend. So no regrets about outsourcing part of the ground game, Caroline? Absolutely not. We believe in our team and we believe in the hundreds of thousands of people who have signed up to be volunteers for President Trump, who we have given low impact tasks to that we believe will make a big difference today in turning out their fellow Americans to the polls. Let me just ask you about some of the rhetoric that we've heard from former President Trump on the campaign trail. Uh, some of his supporters feel as though he hasn't spent enough time focusing on the economy and immigration and instead has focused too much time on at times dark rhetoric talking about training guns, for example, on Congresswoman Liz Cheney. How do you respond to some of that criticism and concern from inside your own orbit? 
Well, let me just correct the record or set it straight, at least, when it comes to the Liz Cheney comment. Mm -hmm. President Trump was referring to how politicians like Liz Cheney sit in Washington, D.C. and make decisions that send America's sons and daughters over to fight in wars, but have never served in combat themselves. That was the greater context of that discussion. And frankly, yeah. I think a lot of Americans, Democrats and Republicans, agree with him on that. When it comes to the alleged dark rhetoric, he's talking about the reality in this country right now. More than 70 percent of the country feels that we are moving in in the wrong direction. When you look at our border, when you look at the economy, prices are still 25 percent higher. Americans are falling behind. There's a lot of pessimism across the country. People want an optimistic leader, and President Trump is offering that optimistic vision to make America affordable, safe, and strong again. Caroline, one more question. Can you guarantee that former President Trump will not declare victory before the votes have been cast, before this election has been called? President Trump will be watching the votes tonight, and he will address his supporters at the appropriate time. But can you guarantee he won't declare victory prematurely? I don't think that will happen. I will leave it to him, and I believe that he's going to declare victory and give a speech to his supporters again at the appropriate time. All right, Caroline Levitt, thank you again for being here on Election Day. We really appreciate it. Appreciate your time and perspective. Thanks, Kristen. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.